Welcome to Heart of the Matter Radio with author and host Cynthia L. Simmons. How does a godly woman live in a world out of sync? Cynthia digs into the issues women face in our complex culture to set a path through the chaos. It's for women seeking the elegance of God's wisdom. So prepare yourself to listen, learn, and rest. Now here's your host, Cynthia L. Simmons. This is the second in a two-part series on sleep. And as I mentioned before, sleep is something that we tend to cut back on so that we can get more things done in our day. But that's really not a very good thing to do because it's so important to our health. However, there are times that we can't sleep for other reasons besides just being busy. I love the verse in Psalm 4.8 that says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So certainly if there's fear there, we know that we can rest in the Lord. Some of us have gone through menopause and you discover that sleep just sometimes doesn't come. Well, my guest is author Jennifer Slattery, and she has been through that and she has some answers for us. So welcome, Jennifer. Hi, Cynthia. It's so good to be here. It's good to be good to see you again. Thank you. Tell me how you solve that problem. Yeah, well, first of all, I do have to say there's I don't know if there's much that's more difficult than being sleep deprived and it can kind of create this this self-defeating cycle where you struggle to sleep for me it was because of menopause you struggle to sleep and then you're you get further behind and so then you become more anxious and then you can actually develop anxiety related to sleep because you lay there thinking well what if i don't get to sleep and then and it and it can really be a very self-defeating cycle. So I, I kind of was in that place where I, it just felt like I was routinely battling difficulty sleeping. And so I really, my personality, I hit on it. I hit it from every angle Mm -hmm. and I, I just decided I, I'm not going, I can't, I can't function this way. I've got to figure this out. I've got to do everything I can in my power to, to get, to start sleep again. When times when I don't sleep, I will try so hard and try so hard. And then when it's time to get up, I'll feel myself starting to relax and go to sleep. And then it's too late. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, So one thing that really helped me kind of when I was in the beginning of just trying to figure out why my sleep schedule was so disrupted is I, I first began from a faith element because I reminded myself, so I I have, you know, I I have book deadlines and and I lead a ministry. And and so I had all of these time commitments that I felt like I couldn't just put aside, but yet I was struggling to really focus because I was so sleep deprived. And I, like I said, I began to feel anxious, but then I reminded myself. So there's a passage in Psalm 139. Some of you might be familiar with, you know, where David's like, uh, you you know me when I you know when I sit when I when I rise when I lie down you know what I'm going to say before I say it and and there was one verse that I really latched onto and it said every day of my life was written in your book before a single one came to be and I'm like okay God you knew this was coming you you knew I'd have these deadlines you knew I would have all of these commitments and then I would be struggling with sleep during this time. Therefore, you must have put you you must have a plan for this in, in some way. And so that kind of gave me that help dial back the anxiety that can make it so much more challenging. And so I, I, I started there and then I I really did for a while. I I did a sleep program. So it was an app on my phone where you can program in like, how are you sleeping? What you do during the day? And and they give you a lot of science. So that was probably the first step where they gave me some, some tools that some things that I hadn't necessarily thought of that, that could be helpful. Some reminders that I think we hear and we're like, yeah, maybe I should do better with that. And so that kind of got me taking some steps in the right direction. Did it help to perhaps start getting into some sort of a routine about thinking about how it's time to go to bed and that kind of thing? Yeah, well, so that was one part of it, Cynthia. I had become, so I like to get things done and I hadn't realized I had, I wasn't doing a lot of the things that were bringing me joy. 
Mm-hmm. And so I, I wasn't doing like quote unquote play. And so I started doing more creative endeavors at nighttime. So at seven o'clock at night, whereas normally I would have maybe continued working until eight, eight thirty at night. And I said, okay, seven o'clock is my, I'm shutting my computer down. And I started doing like coloring and painting and things just to, to get to increase my creative juices thinking, well, that's going to help just calm my mind down, give me something else I can, I can focus on. So I did start doing that. And I started being really diligent. Yes. About my schedule. And so I keep the same routine ever, and I still do now the same routine every night, seven o'clock. I, I can, I close my computer down. I do, I've been doing some coloring, adult coloring, and that's when I kind of, and I have, and then I will read. So I go from the coloring and then I go to reading. So that, that was one thing I did. And then, but I also bought a sun lamp. And so, because I live in the Midwest and it's really, really dark in the winter and, you know, and I think for anywhere you live in the United States, winters have shorter days and that can really mess with our circadian rhythms. So I got a sun lamp and what I didn't realize initially is I thought, well, okay, so I'm going to do my sun lamp and boom, everything's going to be great. But a lot of these, these tools, they can take months before they they have full effect. And I didn't recognize that. And so it's something you need to be consistent with. And so in the morning I would do for 30 and I didn't also realize you have to do it for 30 minutes. It's not, you just kind of turn it off and on. And so when I was reading my Bible, I would have my sun lamp on and, and then I began to be more diligent with my exercise as well. So it's kind of this big picture where it's not just one aspect and the other thing I was doing that was making it difficult for me to sleep is I was, I would bring my work into bed. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, your brain gets very confused. It's like, well, this isn't sleep time anymore. This is now work time. And so I have stopped doing that as convenient as it can be to work in bed. I have now, I I leave my bed for my bed. And And then the other thing I started doing was looking at my diet. And I said, okay, I menopause was, was, and so I've been in menopause since 45. I'm lucky that I get it. I got it very young, kind of tongue in cheek, but I started looking at some of my eating habits and recognizing that I was not eating any, any foods that naturally produced estrogen. Mm -hmm. And so I started drinking a lot of soy milk and I started eating legumes. And now what piece made all the difference? I don't know. I think it was a combination of all these things that, you know, that help. It does help over time that I learned to let my mind wind down because I would go to bed after, you know, working constantly working ferociously and my mind was in bed going, and that was just not conducive. I had to learn to take a hot bath, you know, think calming thoughts, put on pajamas, get comfortable and start thinking about bed. Turning off lights actually helps too. Because lights will keep you stimulated. And TV is one light that is meant to keep you on. (laughs) That's true. Turning off lights produces natural melatonin. Yeah. Well, I also started doing more writing by hand because for initially, so it took, it took time to really reset my rhythms. And again, to speaking of that, kind of that cycle where you can get where I'm not falling asleep. So then I'm anxious that I'm not falling asleep and then it keeps me awake. So I said, well, okay, I'm awake. So what am I going to do? Well, I am going to, and so I started doing writing by hand because I write as, you know, as my career. And so I started doing that in notebooks that way. And, and I would say, I would have things lined up. Okay. If I can't sleep, these are things I can do that doesn't use an artificial light, you know, that, um, so it wouldn't be on my computer or on my phone, but that I could still feel like I'm not necessarily wasting a bunch of time. Yeah. And writing like that is really good for you because it, it helps you process emotions and stuff like that. So it is good for you. Yes. Yes. Well, a lot of times I would journal too. And so I'm, you know, journaling on scripture passage. I'm like, okay, God, I'm awake. So I might as well pray. (laughs) And that's a good way to do it. And writing it out is also really good for you. I, I discovered that the whole rhythm thing was something that I had ignored for way too long. And I had to start paying attention to it, but yeah. And you look really good. So you, well, thank you. 
Yeah, I, I've been doing really well with my sleep. And so I've been really encouraged because for a while there, it just felt like I was not making progress and it was, it was getting discouraging. And, and so I think if I would say to anybody who's in that place where, where it's really disrupting your life, just be persistent, yes, be, be, be persistent. consistent and persistent. And if it it will take time. I want to say for me, it, I mean, it, it took months before I started noticing progress, but then I would still, I would still have times where I would be disrupted, but then it became less frequent. And so I, I also started keeping a, a sleep journal and I'm like, okay, what was going on when, when I was feeling worked up? And here's one thing that was actually a wonderful side benefit, Cynthia. I realized my, it, my sleep is so important that I cannot afford to have a cluttered heart. And so I got really good at confession because bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, all of that can stir up anxiety. Mm -hmm. And whether it was a conversation that was just something, you know, maybe small or whether there was like some, some relational conflict I was experiencing, I learned to be, to, to keep a very short list and just every night, like Lord purify my heart, what's going on, you know, and, and that has been hugely helpful. I remember Spurgeon used to do that every night. He would always pray before he went to bed and he was with somebody it was before he was married. And the guy just got in bed and he said, what are you doing? You can't not just go to bed. You've got to get up and pray. And so he made the guy get up and pray with him. So that's a good habit. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, and we, we don't always notice, you know, there's David has a Psalm or he wrote in one of the Psalms who knows all the sin lurking in their heart, cleanse me from my hidden sins. And for me, I didn't always notice. I wasn't aware of some of like those roots of bitterness that were kind of poking, I guess, at my soul and through prayer, then God can bring those things to mind. You're like, oh yeah, that does kind of put me on edge or that is kind of a, yeah. and, and just learning to release those things. It's, it's so freeing. And isn't it wonderful that we can release them? Amen. You know, I mean, how would we live without the Lord? I just can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and to know that we're forgiven too. So like, if we're, if we're, if you have kids at home, like littles and I mean, mama guilt is a real thing, right? I mean, I don't know if that's a, that's a hard thing, but just again, saying I am covered in grace. I'm in a process of transformation. I'm, I'm transformed from who I was yesterday and I am going to be even different tomorrow. And and so just reminding ourselves of that too, can really help us to, to have restful sleep as well. Okay. Very good. Thank you for your time, Jennifer. This was excellent. Absolutely. Yes. Tell us where we can find you. Yeah. Well, so you could go to my website, Jennifer Slattery Lives Out Loud. And then also you can find my ministry, excuse me, you can find my ministry, Holy Loved Ministry. So it's W-H-O-L-L-Y, holyloved.com. And then I have a Faith Over Fear podcast and the Your Daily Bible Verse podcast. So you can find me there as well. Sounds like you're busy. Yes. But now that I'm sleeping, it's awesome. Yeah, and you're able to get it all done. What a fun chat with Jennifer and useful too. I'm your hostess, Cynthia L. Simmons. You can find me at clsimmons.com. I have homeschool curriculum. I have Bible studies. I have prayers for a woman. So lots of stuff to keep you informed and encouraged, and there's more coming. So thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again next week here on Heart the Mad Radio, where we offer God's timeless wisdom. You've been listening to Heart of the Matter Radio with Cynthia L. Simmons. Your comments and questions are always welcome. Contact us at Cynthia at CLSimmons.com. We'd love to hear from you, whether you're an author, young mom, a mother of teens, a homeschool mother, or an empty nester. Join us next time as Cynthia once again sets a path to grow in wisdom and a closer walk with the Savior here on Heart of the Matter Radio.